desperately trying to get back into the team as he's been displaced by Nuno Mendes into Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez with his left. Oh my. Welcome back everyone to the start of the fourth and what is going to be the final season in this Newcastle United career mode. And last season, while we did end up ninth in the Premier League table, we did manage to secure European football via the Europa League for the second time in a row as we crowned ourselves Europa League champions thanks to a fantastic 2-1 win against Marseille in the final. Now, as for this season, you can see the board have given me 244 million to spend and I've decided I am going all in. So it's time to kick this episode off with some serious transfer business. Now, as you can see, I've decided to go big and you can see my assistant manager seems to think I can be able to get that man Mbappe in for just over 216 million. And whilst I did fly all the way over to Paris and try and negotiate with the manager of PSG, he was having absolutely none of it. Wanted more than what my entire budget is and unfortunately I had to end negotiation earlier. So Kylian Mbappe, I'm afraid, will not be playing for Newcastle United this season. However, after flying all the way over to Italy and having a conversation with the manager of AC Milan, I may have just found someone else who could do a fantastic job for us. And after a brief round of negotiation, I have managed to secure the services of that man, Charles de Quetelaure, for £87.8 million. 24 years of age, 86 rated, and he has that something special. As you can see from his stats as well, phenomenal balanced stats right across the board. Four star skill moves and weak foot, high attacking and defensive work rate, and he has phenomenal physical, mental, and technical stats as well. He will come in and he will provide fantastic competition for this man, Jonathan David, this season. And what a way to kick off this brand new season four. Next up, and after the retirement of Fabian Schaar at the end of last season, it has left a Swiss shaped hole at the back of my defence, and I have space now for a fourth centre back to join the club. Enter this man, Christian Romero from Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. A fee of £85.1 million agreed, and I told you I was going big this summer. The irony is, with three other centre-backs all rated in the high 80s as well, in particular the right-sided Tamori who's rated 89, Romero won't actually get into my starting 11, but what a phenomenal backup he will be. And he will, however, provide so much more competition than Fabian Schaar did. And speaking of centre-backs, those who watched my previous episode will know that this man, Nico Slotterbeck, actually came knocking on my door demanding to leave the club as he wasn't happy with the amount of games he's getting. And I was fending off offers for him at the back end of last episode, and I'm going to continue to do that today. This time, I've got an offer from Real Madrid for 14.8 million pounds plus Julian Brand, I am sorry my friends, but it's going to be another reject offer for him and I'm just going to keep him at the club this season because I really don't think I'm going to get anyone better than him. Now they are going to be the only two transfers I am going to make this episode, but with £57 million still in the transfer budget, I still have room for one more signing. And looking at my team, whilst I do have a very strong starting midfield, I don't, however, have too many decent players in reserve. I've got Elliot Anderson and Joe Willock, who are 77 and 79 rated, respectively. So, ideally, I would look to bring in a central midfielder. So let me know down in the comments below, what central midfielder do you think I can bring in for just under £57 million that can genuinely come in and improve and compete with the players I've already got at the squad? However, with all this spending comes great responsibility, and you can see... The objectives on FIFA keep getting sillier and sillier by the season. In spite of being knocked out of the group stage last season, FIFA and the board want me to win the Champions League this year. And not only do they want me to do that, they also want me to win the Premier League title and win the FA Cup. So despite getting knocked out early doors in the FA Cup in all of the previous seasons I've played and coming ninth in the Premier League last season, they want me to do the treble. Absolutely ridiculous. And unfortunately, there is even more frustrating news as my first choice left back, Nuno Mendes, has now sprained his ankle in a pre-season friendly and he will be out for up to the first four weeks of this Premier League season, so not the start I was looking for this episode. However, it is enough of the talk as it is time to kick off 
the very first game of this new season and what a game to kick off the season with. It is a UEFA Super Cup game against Champions League winners PSG. Now last season we ended up winning this competition right at the start of the season having played unlikely Champions League winners Benfica in this final. However, with PSG, our opponents today, they are going to provide us with far stiffer competition this time round. It's unfortunate for Nuno Mendes that he's going to miss this game out against his former team due to injury. However, this first game of the season does give me the opportunity to give both of my new signings their competitive debuts today. Livramento, Tamori Romero and Sessegnon at the back. Pobega, Guamares, and Enzo Fernandez form the usual midfield. Brennan Johnson, St. Maximan and Charles de Quetelare start up front. Renato Sanchez now for PSG to try and drive the ball forward early doors in this game. It's Sarabia now on the right-hand side trying to go past Ryan Sessegnon, but he does really well. He is desperate, desperately trying to get back into the team as he's been displaced by Nuno Mendes. As Mbappe, the man I tried to sign in the summer, gets the ball off of Nick Pope. Oh my word, what a disaster of a start. Sarabia just places the ball into an empty net absolute shambles at the back for Nick Pope. He's been phenomenal all three seasons and this season what an absolute calamity. Gave the ball away to Mbappe. Renato Sanchez smashed it against him and it fell right to that man Zarabia who made no mistake easily able to just pass it into an open net. Eddie Howe absolutely furious and rightly so. We kick off here 1-0 to PSG. Enzo Fernandez now, oh, he's come under pressure from Kylian Mbappe and this has not been the start I would have wanted here today. PSG definitely, definitely providing stiffer competition than Benfica did this time last season. Mbappe now challenged by the new signing Romero, but he can't get the ball off of him. Oh, Mbappe, lovely flick into Sarabia, who strikes, and it's 2-0. Inside 15 minutes, PSG have ripped us apart, and they lead 2-0 here. What on earth is going on? Romero, the new signing, has not covered himself in glory either. Poor challenge on Mbappe, and the other new signing, Charles de Quetelare up front, hasn't even been able to touch the ball. An absolute shambles here today, and it's 2-0 PSG inside 15 minutes. Carlos Soler into Renato Sanchez. PSG goes searching for a third goal here. Kylian Mbappe gives it back to Sanchez. Oh, he just goes past Romero like he's not even there. This is an absolute joke. What on earth is going on? 25 minutes played, and PSG are 3-0 up here. What is happening? Pobega. Oh, for goodness sake, he gets challenged by Mbappe, and PSG are looking for a fourth here. This is complete nonsense. Mbappe easily able to just brush off Bruno Gomares. It's Gakpo now on the left-hand side, easily able to drive past Liveramento. He's got the pace and the strength to hold him off. They went for the bicycle kick there. Unfortunately for me, they weren't able to get the job done. But now we can try and break Enzo Fernandez into the path of St. Maximan. He's got the opportunity to try and get us a goal. He does get us a goal. It's 3-1 here. We are back in the game after a shambles of a start. Don't go kicking it into the net. I want you to pick it up, man. Liveramento now into Pobega. Turns nicely away from Renato Sanchez. Bruno Gamares into Enzo Fernandez, who's been pretty quiet so far this game. Quetelare now tries to turn, has no option, so has to go back to Bruno Gamares. He tries to turn as well and goes back to Quetelare. He tries to play a ball forward into Brennan Johnson, who literally has barely seen the ball all game. We have been so, so poor. Renato Sanchez now trying to escape. Bruno Gamares does well, though. Can I feed it to Pobega? Yes, I can. Into Quetelare now. I'm going to try and strike straight against the defender. Enzo Fernandez into into Pobega, he's going to try and strike, and again, they block it off and get it clear. Enzo Fernandez into St. Maximan on the left-hand side. He, like Brennan Johnson, has been very quiet, but Pobega now has it. Pobega to strike. Good save. Pobega into Bruno Gamares now. Enzo Fernandez now. I'm going to try and play this all the way over to Ryan Sessegnon on the left-hand side. Takes it down really nicely. Ball in the box. Good stop by the goalkeeper. Renato Sanchez in the centre does really nicely to turn away from Bruno Gamares, who tries to put the brakes on him, but isn't strong enough. Hakimi now has it for PSG. They're looking to add a fourth here. Mukele now on the right-hand side. Great ball in. And it's Kylian Mbappe with a phenomenal diving header to give PSG a 4-1 lead here. And they have all but put both hands on on the trophy now. Absolute shambles at the back. And it's so frustrating that goal came when it did because I've made a change. I've made three changes and I've gone to three at the back, stuck Jonathan David on up front and gone with two up front. And I think it's too little too late, but Jonathan David picks it up, strikes it straight against the defender. And now PSG can try and counter attack again with Kylian Mbappe trying to run at Tamori. Turns really nicely away from him. Oh, Tamori 
made to look foolish there. Mbappe now drives in, smashes it from distance and forces Nick Pope into a gigantic save. It's a corner for PSG. They're just looking to add insult to injury now. They whip it in. It's a decent ball in. It's Soler who picks it up. And fortunately, it falls to Pabega who can try and counter-attack now. Delo uh, Ketelara, sorry, plays it in. I'm going to hopefully try and play it into Elise. He does just that. Elise picks it up now. I'm waiting for Ketelara to try and get back into the box. Ah, oh, and it's so poor. And PSG again can try and counter-attack. They've been better than us in every phase of play. Every single player has been better the referee puts me out of my misery. PSG 4-1 winners here. We cannot repeat the feat that we did at the start of last season and become UEFA Super Cup champions for the second time. It is a 4-1 defeat. Set Maximan looks to the sky. I don't know what on earth went wrong. It was a 30-minute spell in the first half that was our undoing. PSG ripping us apart, taking a 3-0 lead. And that man, Marquinhos, the captain of PSG, will lift the trophy right in front of my fans. And here we go. Marquinhos to lift the trophy for PSG. They are UEFA Super Cup champions. And it's a really, really bad way to start this new season. Now, this is an interesting one. I did say at the start of the episode that I wasn't planning on selling Nico Slotterbeck, but Atletico Madrid have come in with a very interesting offer. They want to offer 7 million plus Kimbembe as well. Now, Kimbembe, whilst he is 30 years of age, he is the same rating as Slotterbeck, and he also has more pace than him as well. He's left footed also, so. Could this be a decent deal that I could pursue? So I have gone ahead and tried to negotiate with Atletico Madrid and I have managed to get the fee up to £11 million as well. So I've gone ahead and accepted that deal. I've also gone ahead and agreed a contract with Kimbembe as well. So now all we need to do is sit back and wait to see whether or not Slotterbeck is going to agree the deal with Atletico Madrid. If he does then it will be bye-bye Slotovec, hello Kimbembe. However, you are going to have to wait until episode two of this new season before you can find out whether or not Slotovec agreed that deal with Atletico Madrid. As for now, it is time, as you can see, to kick off our Premier League campaign at home at St. James's Park against Everton. And heading into this game, there are a couple of changes to my starting 11. Nick Pope, fortunately for him, retains his place. However, both debutants are out. Sven Botman back in in the centre of the defence and Jonathan David will come back in to lead the line in place of De Catalara, who will drop to the bench to Mori. Into Pobega now. Pobega trying to see if he can find any sort of angle and there's no one showing whatsoever. So I give it to Bruno Gamares. Gamares tries to take this one forward. It rebounds off the defender. I thought it was going to fall back to him, but annoyingly it didn't. And now Everton can really try and strike a counter-attack. It's the Watzlai into off uh, Ocker four I think that's who it is McNeil Sessignon coming across to put a challenge in really good stuff and we can try and counter attack ourselves here end to end stuff here inside the opening 15 minutes as we give the ball away and Everton go again Zabotslai with a great ball over to Diop on the left hand side he takes ages to try and take the ball down Liveramento covers him off but they put it back in the box and Sven Botman is there to block the shot now Enzo Fernandez can try and break. My word, what a start to this game. It's Pobega. I'm going to try and play it out to Liveramento on the right-hand side. Can I try and find a decent ball in? I can. It's a decent ball in. The goalkeeper just got there in time. And Everton clear the ball away. Sven Botman into Enzo Fernandez now. He turns really nicely. Gives it to Bruno Gamares. Finds Brennan Johnson. Brennan Johnson to strike. Brennan Johnson to put the ball in the back of the net for our first Premier League goal in season four. A great finish from a man who has been uncharacteristically quiet in the opening games of this season so far. But just when I needed him to step up, he did just that. Puts it in the back of the net and we take a one goal lead here. Ryan Sessignon into Sven Botman. It's Tamori who now picks it up. And uh, Tamori looking for a pass forward into the feet of Pabega. It's a good pass. And Pabega gives it to Bruno Gamares. I'm going to try and play it. That was a fierce pass. I was actually trying to play it to set Maximan. But Enzo Fernandez took it over. And he gave it to Pabega, who absolutely smashed it wide. It's a header one very nicely by Bruno Gamares. And Jonathan David picks it up. Tries to feed set Maximan on the left-hand side. He takes it really nicely. Shifts back onto his right. Going to look for a strike. And he forces the keeper into a good stop. Pabega now with an opportunity on the right-hand side to try and whip a decent ball in. It's a decent ball in and very calm defending. The defender just took it down on his chest instead of trying to clear it away. Bruno Gamara is into Enzo Fernandez, who just took a heavy touch 
And it's easily able to get away there from Everton. But Bruno Gamares picks it up again. Gives it to St. Maximan on the left-hand side. Trying to find a ball into Jonathan David. It's not a good enough ball. And Everton can once again get the ball clear. It's Pogba who gets it clear. He now finds himself playing for Everton. Bit of a uh, sharp decline for him. It's Okafor now picks it up. Lays it into McNeil. McNeil to Provod. Now out wide to Diop on the left-hand side. And it's a fairly tame shot that Nick Pope can get his hand to. Pogba for Everton. Oh, nicely challenged by Bruno Gamares. He gives it to Brennan Johnson now. Takes it off really nicely and goes round the defender. Brennan Johnson's had a cracking game so far. Brennan Johnson with his left. Forces the goalkeeper into another big stop. Pabega with the resulting corner again. Whips it into the head of Brennan Johnson. And it's headed away by the Everton defenders. But we've got another opportunity here. It's Sven Botman who picks it up. Gives it to Bruno Gamares. Turns really nicely. And in the end, it's a bit of a tame shot that the keeper's easily able to collect. Tarkovsky for Everton trying to bring this one forward. Plays a nice ball into Sabotsly, who finds himself unmarked in the centre of the park. Where on earth are my midfield? Okafor lays a nice ball out to Diop on the left-hand side, who goes past Liveramento, and almost, my word, to Mori. And Nick Pope almost getting cross-wired there, and Nick Pope, for the second game running, almost made a calamitous error, but fortunately enough, he was able to pick the ball up again. But Everton looking to strike. Pogba, though, gives it away to Bruno Gamares, who skips away from him once again. Enzo Fernandez. St. Maximan's in space on the left-hand side. He can find him. St. Maximan plays the ball in, and Jonathan David just can't get there ahead of the goal. Keeper. It's Okafor now into Sabot's life for Everton. We are only 1 0 up here, so we do have to be careful. It's a decent ball over to Diop. Diop heads it back into Sabot's like again. Sven Botman. There is a reason why he's come back into defence for us. He's been absolutely sensational today. Pabega into Jonathan David. Jonathan David has managed to stay on side. This has got to be for 2 0 here. Jonathan David. And it's a really poor shot, and the goalkeeper's able to save. Pabega now has it, tries to play it right the way over to the left hand side and it's a really good ball into St Maximan who did well to win the header. Jonathan David into Enzo Fernandez. Enzo Fernandez with his left, oh my, blazes it over the crossbar. Provod now for Everton into Okafor, really nice stuff. Tamori stepped up really nicely there. Sinistera tried to play that into Ryan Sessegnon but it was a poor ball and now Everton can try and break with just under two minutes remaining plus stoppage time. They're driving forward here now. Ball over to McNeil. Well taken down by Liveramento. Tamori has it now. We should, we should have done enough to try and seal this game out. Liveramento turns nicely and the referee blows the whistle. Game over here. It was a tight affair at St. James's Park but the most important thing is we make amends for a shocking game against PSG with a solid 1-0 win here. A great start to kickstart our Premier League campaign. A Premier League campaign that the board are expecting us to win. I just want us to qualify for Champions League and do a little bit better than we did last season. That man, Brennan Johnson, with the goal. It finishes here, 1-0. And that is where we're going to end the episode today. One game into the Premier League, three points on the board, sixth place, and we can't have any complaints about that one. Annoyingly, absolute shocking display in the UEFA Super Cup. Ended up getting us battered by PSG 4-1. But with £62 million left in the transfer budget, and who knows, maybe another 11 mil if we manage to sell Slotterbeck to Atletico Madrid, we have a lot of money to spend in the start of the next episode. Let me know down in the comments below what midfielder, ideally a central midfielder, would you like me to see bring into the club. But that is that for the end of this episode. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.